Wyoming Armory, right here in the heart and soul of American Vintage Firearms, Cody, Wyoming. Now one of the things that's great about doing what we do here, and all of us here just love these old vintage firearms, is that we occasionally get to work on some really rare and unusual firearms. And when that happens, we get to share them with you. <laughs> and today's no different. You see, we're standing in front of our on-deck safe, the, the firearms that are waiting to be either worked on or go through a restoration process. And as you might expect, if you watch this channel much, we've got a lot of Winchesters in here, but not exclusively. There's a, there's a couple of Remingtons in here. There's a Bullard in here, um, a few Colts up here. And we're, we're doing more and more single action army Colts these days as word gets out that uh, that's one of our specialties. But today we're going to look at a rifle that stands out, that's head and shoulders <laughs> above the others. And you've probably already picked it out because it's almost as tall as I am. <laughs> so they, today we're talking about a very rare 1894 with the longest avail available barrel, the 36-inch 1894 and 3240. So stick around, we'll take a little closer look at this rare old 1894 and talk a little bit about what we've been tasked to do to, to make this look right again. Now at first blush, this looks about like any other run-of-the-mill 1894 from the turn of the century. But it isn't until we start looking down the barrel and mag tube that things start to change. We just keep going. And go on. Now there's the first mag tube hanger. And now we get to the second mag tube hanger. And now all the way down here to the muzzle. <laughs> now you may have noticed that the condition of this one it doesn't really match. You know, we've got a whole lot more blue down here on the mag tube and the barrel than we do on the receiver. And if we get up a little closer yet, we can see that the lever link down below has been reblued. Um, the the hammer here is blued where it should be case color hardened. So we've got some work to do to make this thing look correct for the time. So let's look, take a look at just exactly how rare these extra length barrels are in 1894s, and in particular the 36 inch barrels. Now this is a chart that was compiled from a study of the Winchester factory records over here at the Cody Firearms Museum just a, a few blocks down the road here. This was published in their RMAX publication back in 1995. So as we can see this is broken down by caliber so we've got 3855, 3240, 30 WCF, 2535, and 32 Special. And then we've got broken down by the number of, of each barrel length over standard. Of course, we know 26 inches is standard length for 1894. So this, this lines all the 28 inch, 30 inch, and on down to our 36 down here. And as we can see, predominantly the extra length barrels were in the 3855, although there was quite a few in this 3240 as well. And we generally think of those as the only two calibers that had extra length barrels in the 94 lineup, but there were a few 30 WCF, including actually one 36 inch in the record, and I don't think it's ever showed up if it still uh, survives today. And then the 2535, there was just one extra length 30 inch and no 3220. So predominantly we're in the 3855s and the 3240s. Now if we look down here to the 36 inch line, there were eight 3855s, 13 3240s, and this is one of those 13 that we, we're showing you here today. And then, of course, our 130 WCF. Now, if we work out the math in this, for those of you who like statistics, you know, extra length barrels made up less than one half of 1% of the 1894 production. Now, the factory records only go through the first 354,000 um, 1894s. So in this case, the 1,562 um, is, is that about four-tenths of one percent. And if we take it even further out to the 36-inch barrels, one in 16,094s made had a 36-inch bar inch barrel. Pretty crazy. And wait till you hear how this one surfaced. Now one of the reasons that these 36-inch barrel Winchesters are so rare and desirable is that obviously they didn't make very many of them. But beyond that, 
the ones that survived, many of them didn't survive with the 36 inch barrel. Now the, the owners would take them out in the field and find that, you know, that all that extra barrel out there is kind of cumbersome, it's kind of heavy. So they'd either cut them off or replace the barrel. And therein lies the story on why the finish is so mismatched on this particular rifle. You see, the owner of this rifle, who's an astute Winchester collector, um, found this at a local gun store in his area. And it was a rifle with a carbine barrel on it. And he made a deal on it. There was 20 boxes of ammo with it as well that he thought the ammo was worth about what he paid for the gun, so he'd made a really good deal. <laughs> he had no idea how good a deal until he contacted our friends Jesse and Angela over here at the Cody Firearms Records Office to do a search and see what the record said about the originality of this one. <laughs> and of course we're glad he did because obviously it came back as a 36 inch 3240-1894. I don't know where those kind of deals are when I'm at the gun shows, but I never seem to fall into them. But anyway, this one, of course, because it had the barrel replaced and the original barrel was gone, he wanted to get it back to original, at least looking right. And he's not interested in making a fake or anything like that. He just wants, and, and I would feel the same way, of course, I want it to look like it should. Okay, so he'd sent it to a gunsmith that was there for two years getting a barrel made for it and unfortunately it looks like one of those mail order barrels and I won't get into who's making those, those um, mail order send them out and get them fitted kind of barrels but anyway it, it's just not very well made and he was astute enough to be able to see that and want it done right and thankfully he talked to some folks who said if you want it done right send it to the folks at Wyoming Armory there in Cody so he did so this one, you know, the, the barrel address is, is way too shallow. All the dovetails are way too shallow as well, and, and that's very problematic. Now we could go in and weld up those edges and recut those dovetails, but we don't like welding on barrels, and so we would have to send them out to a laser welder because we don't have a $30,000 laser welder here yet. Um, but the, the uh, owner, made the decision he just wanted a correctly made barrel rather than trying to salvage this one. Um, and of course there's there's some stamping issues here with the caliber stamp and, and the proof mark stamp that's blued over. Um, mag tube's been polished round and round and we know of course from at this time that they polish lengthwise. Should be rust blued, it's caustic blued. Um, just a lot of things wrong that aren't quite right. So we're going to we're going to send out and have a, a 36 inch barrel blank made and then we're going to, to uh, do all the work to make it look just like it should, if, like it was uh, installed, made and installed in 1905 like the rest of the rifle. It's going to be a great fun project. And of course at the end of this project, you know, we owe it to the customer to safety check and test fire these rifles. So keep an eye out for that. And if you watch this channel much, you know that I have in my personal collection an even rarer 36 inch Winchester rifle. One of the 1895s of which there are only six in the factory record and two that we know survive today. So when we take this one out to test fire, we might make a, a day of it and take that 95 36 inch out there and, and fire off the pair of them. <laughs> that ought to be a great episode. At least I'm going to enjoy the heck out of it. So, thanks for joining us today. I just had to bring this one to you. I'm pretty excited about this project. Until next time, happy trails from Wyoming Armory in Cody, Wyoming.